Hello there, my name is Ella and today we're going to paint a metal. This video is a part of a material study series that is designed as a month-long YouTube series, so make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the videos. I mentioned before that I have struggled to paint metal and if you are struggling with it right now, I'm going to make it easier for you and explain how to finally do it in a very easy way and with a very easy example of it. So we're starting with a isometric cube because it has three visible sides or planes and is way easier to paint and understand the different lighting setups from this perspective. I'm gonna make a new layer underneath my cube layer. I'm gonna lower the opacity of my cube layer. I'm gonna use a lasso tool and place base color. Next, what I'm gonna do is make a new layer and by pressing Alt on a keyboard, you'll see this little arrow, which means we're going to clip mask this layer to our base shape layer. That basically means when we are painting something, it doesn't go anything outside this shape that we clipped this layer too. Now I'm gonna place a lighting setup on this cube, which means if our light is coming from the top left corner, that means the top plane is going to be the lightest, the left plane is going to be a little bit in shadow, and our right plane is going to be completely in shadows. I separated every plane on its own layer, so it's easier to paint later on. First, we need to have in mind that metal is a very reflective object, which means it reflects its surroundings. And when we say that something looks metallic, uh, we usually refer to something looking shiny and reflective. So to make something look metallic, luster is a key factor when painting this material. And luster is basically a reflective shine. Before we go into all the details and texture, uh, I want to make a little bit more organic look out of this cube. So how I'm gonna do that is to basically add the mask to my base shape. So go back to base shape layer and click mask. Okay, uh, make sure to stay on this white part and not on the layer, so click the mask. And now when we use our brush and color black we can basically make different shapes out of this cube and which actually means we erase parts that we think it's needed or if we use white color we can bring back those parts so this tool is very useful when when you want to play with your shape, but you don't want to actually erase it. I always use mask and play with this tool because if I need to fix my shapes later on, I can always go back to my main layer and fix it. Next thing I'm going to do is to paint shadows. So I'm going to use a soft round pressure opacity brush and I'm going to size it up just a little bit more, like so. And then if I, just a little more, like so. And then if I want to make shadows on my middle tone right here, I'm going to color pick this darker value I have and that will be my. That will be my shadow for this tone. If I want to make shadows on my lightest plane, I'm going to color pick this middle tone and that will be my shadow for this, for this value. And if I want to make shadows on my darkest plane, I'm going to color pick my darker value I have prepared here. Now I'm going to start with my middle tone right here. And then I'm going to click on that layer and then I'm going to click this, this little icon, which basically means pixel lock. You'll see this little lock on this layer. This actually behaves the same as clipped mask, but in this case, we don't have a extra layer. So basically we're only painting inside this layer.
and next I'm going to paint highlights. In this case, when we have this straight up a isometric cube, I would say it's way easier to place highlights and to look believable. But if you have a more complex shape or object, and let's say that our light is right here and we have an object looking something like this. Okay, let's say that this is our metal object. The light is going to go down and reflect on this side too. So that is basically the meaning of reflections on this surface. Even if this plane is in the shadows completely, it will definitely reflect some light from the environment, from some other objects, despite the fact that it's not directly looking at the light source. So have that in mind. Again, I'm going to use my soft frame brush. Okay. And the rule is the same here for, for the highlights. My highlighted area for the middle tone is going to be the lightest one. The light for my darker value is going to be this one. And highlight for my lightest plane is going to be basically the lightest value I have prepared up here. Okay, now that we have our highlights and shadows placed, now we need to make sure that this actually looks like a metal. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add a new layer upon all of these layers, clip it. I'm going to size down my brush. Then I'm going to use hard run brush for this and then color pick my lightest value from this color palette and press pen pressure. And now I'm going to place highlights on the corners to really indicate how shiny this material actually is. So as we said, metal is a very reflective material, which means it will reflect everything that is in its surroundings. So in this case, I like to use a texture brush. Uh, feel free to use any kind of texture brush that suits you and you, you love to use. And on a new layer, don't forget to clip it. I'm going to color pick my background color and slightly, slightly start to edit on my shape. And now we can go back and play with the opacity. So I'm just gonna lower the opacity to 70%. And because metal reacts to its environment, it's going to react and basically act as a mirror to a certain point. Now, I also want to play with the textures of metal and to give it uh, a rougher and uneven metallic look to it, uh, I'm going to use a texture brush again, size it down and use pen pressure and random place cuts to achieve that worn out look. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to clip it to a base shape. And then I'm going to start with lighter tones. So let's say this one and just randomly place it on the metal. To add a little bit more personality to our metal, let's also add some rust. Uh, this metal is pretty old and used, so it has its scars. Create a new layer, clip it, you know the drill. Use that texture brush that you like and with big strokes, like bigger strokes, let's say like something like this, add rust. And I'm going to go down to like red and orange red color, something like this. Let's try this one and add some rust. 
so at this point experiment with the opacity or erase some parts if it's too much or you can simply play with this blending modes and I'm going to try with multiply or maybe overlay overlay looks okay but maybe I'm going with mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with multi I'm going I'm gonna go with overlay and then maybe a more a darker color You can totally leave it smooth and shiny as it was, but I like to add more textures in general. So if you don't feel like it, you can skip this part. Okay, now I want to go back to my main layers where we have light, middle and dark tones. And I want to go on my light layer. Again, use this soft round brush, color pick my lightest value and just a little bit add a little bit more like reflection to it. At this point, it's all about adjustments. Now I'm going to back to my rust layer, try to fix this part because I don't like it right now. So I'm just gonna like play with this stuff, play with these colors try to adjust some parts, try to add maybe more stuff, maybe erase some parts. So you can adjust colors, you can play with blending modes. <laughs> As you see, I went back to normal blending mode because I can work more with that without adding too much layers. But I, but I adjusted the color to a little bit more dark red. And basically at this point, it's all about final touches and adjustments that you think you need to make. So let's, let's just add some final touches. And that's it. Now you know how to paint metal. <laughs> if you found any value in this video, please make sure to subscribe and like this video. It really supports me and my channel. Make sure to check out my coffee page for some free downloadables as well as my full updates on the whole studies. Everything will be linked down below. Stay awesome guys and keep creating. Bye.